Hello beautiful friends, this is the animation that we're going to be making today. It is a Geometry Nodes animation and you might be overwhelmed but actually if you look at it, it is very simple. It's a very simple setup and we are going to use Geometry Proximity in order to make one of these iPhones stand out and basically it looks like this. So that's all we have to do. Very simple stuff but it is a very very cool trick that will allow you to make cool looking animations easily in the future as well. So this is a fundamental skill that you need to have. So we're going to start straight away. I'm going to close this off and I will take my iPhone from another file. All right, so I've got the iPhone right over here and there's a couple of things we need to do in order to make sure that it works in Geometry Nodes as well because Geometry Nodes has a hard time using these empties and I'm not entirely sure why, but we have to remove them. So select the empty first, then select the rest of the iPhone, Alt-P and clear and keep transformation. And now we can delete the empty without everything getting jumbled up. The iPhone should be one solid object as well, by the way. So I'm going to select it, Shift and Control J and now everything will be placed together. It shouldn't do anything weird with our iPhone at all. So I'm going to bring this to the side somewhere over here. The first thing we have to do actually is to give this some different colors. So I'm going to set it to EV mode right over there. Shift D and Y, bring this to the side. And what we need to do is change the color of this iPhone. You don't have to do this. You can also just keep the same color and have the animation occur only with this color, but I think it looks a bit better if you have multiple colors. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to the Apple logo backside. I'm going to copy this texture, go over to the shader editor right here, and we're simply going to change the color in this color ramp. So I'm going to set this one to, uh, let's say a reddish tone, maybe a reddish tone. Of course, we need to do this for the camera plate. We've done this in another tutorial as well, so you could go ahead and take those iPhones if you'd like. But I simply wanted to show you guys this because it's a fundamental part of this uh, tutorial. Simply change the glass color to something that looks like the rest of the iPhone. And this is actually very good. Now, we need to do this a couple of times, let's say four times, so we get four colors of iPhones. I'm going to duplicate this one, D and Y, and I'm quite certain that you'll be able to figure this out for yourself. So I'm not going to show you how I'm going to color each and every iPhone. I'm simply going to do it right now and then I'll come back to you with the Geometry Notes tutorial. All right, so I've got four iPhones right over here. One of them is the silver original titanium color. We've got the red one, a dark one and a sort of gold type iPhone as well. And now we can start working on our Geometry Notes. So I'm going to select all of these iPhones, press M, new collection. I'm going to call it iPhones appropriately. So the next thing that I'm going to do is add a cube, go over to the Geometry Notes editor right over here and I will click on new. Then I'm going to delete the cube because we don't need it. And I will add in a curve circle, curve circle right over here, place it into the geometry and you should be able to see a curve. We can change the radius of this and uh, well, that's basically what we're going to be working with. I'm going to add a resample curve because we want to have control over the amount of iPhones that are going to be spawned on this curve. And let's see, we have to bring in a instance on points. A lot of tutorials begin like this. Instance on points. And then I'm going to drag in the iPhones collection right over here. Now, very important step, set it to relative, separate children and reset children. Plug the instances into the instance. And what do we have? We have a couple of iPhones that are placed neatly in the circle. Of course, it's 10 of them. I'm going to make 11, by the way. But you can change the amount of iPhones distributed on this circle. And I'm going to bring this over to the side, bring in an align rotation to vector, bring it right over here. And now we can manipulate the rotation. So I'm going to plug this into the rotation and nothing happens. Well, that's because we didn't add any input into this yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to determine where the normals are of the circle. So all of the iPhones are supposed to be going outwards depending on the place of the circle, depending on the curve of the circle. Add in a normal, so type that, normal, and a normal should go into the vector. And now everything is moving along with a certain vector, but is it the right one? I don't think so. So we have to change the Z to Y. And now all of our iPhones are pointing outwards and that's exactly what we want. Now, of course we can increase the radius so they don't touch each other. In order to make this spin, we actually need another node. And that is going to be a transform geometry. Bring it right in here. And now if you play around with the Z rotation, all of these iPhones will be moving. However, there's a crucial element missing from this animation. And that is the fact that none of these iPhones are moving upwards. And we actually want to create some type of selection procedure where if an iPhone comes right over here, it should be selected going upwards a little bit and maybe rotate as well. So basically what we need is an object that will determine where that happens. And I'm going to set this back to zero for now and I will turn the resample curve into 11. Right now we have to add a UV sphere. I'm going to add a UV sphere. You can use whatever you would like, but I like UV spheres. So I'm going to bring it down right over here because this is the approximate area where we want this iPhone to move upwards. So if you press on seven here, 
where the iPhone should be going into the air. And the only way to do that actually is by using a geometry proximity node. I'm going to bring that in here, geometry proximity. We should have our UV sphere as the input of the geometry proximity because the UV sphere is the one that is determining the power of this. So sphere right over here plug the geometry into the geometry and naturally it should be relative. Now of course we haven't given this any values to work with yet. So what do we actually want to have happen? There's two things. We want to have an animation that makes it move upwards, which is going to be a set position. We're going to do that first, but we also want to do the rotation later on. Let's add the set position first. So basically what we want to do now is determine on which axis everything is happening. And we can already see that it's happening on the Y axis and it's happening on the X axis, but ours, it should be the Y. So I'm going to separate X, Y, Z. I'm going to take the combine X, Y, Z as well. And I will plug the distance into the vector and the Y into the Y and the vector into the offset. Whoa. Way too strong here, and that's always the case with the geometry proximity. Luckily, we have a map range node. Map range, plug it right in between here. In this map range node, we should play around with the values until we have this one separated from the other ones. And I will show you exactly what I mean. So the correct values would be zero, five, and on the min, we can now play around with this. And as you can see, it is moving upwards. The two max is still set to one. And this is something that we can work with. Let's change this to something like 40 in my case. It might be different for you depending on where the sphere is in this location. But watch this. Watch what happens if we now turn this transform geometry rotation on the z-axis. And we actually have some iPhones that are being spawned like this. And they move upwards. And I already think this is very cool. Don't you think so? But we're definitely not done yet. There's always something to improve. So let's add a rotate instances right over here rotate instances and we also want to drive the rotation using the rotate instances and the way i'm going to do it is simply by moving this to the side i'm going to take this map range and press ctrl shift d and that will duplicate it and then i will plug the result into the rotation now it looks like this of course we have to once again play around with our two min if we make sure that this one is flat and all the other ones are rotating then we've got a pretty cool looking animation i reckon so let's see Oh, and that's way too much. It's moving like crazy. Whew. And that is because it's doing it on all axes. So X, Y, and Z. But we actually want to separate that once again. So I'm going to duplicate this entire setup. Bring it right over here. And make sure that this one is connected to the vector. And this one to the rotation. And now, if we play around with this. You can already see how much cool animations you can make with this simply by playing around with some values. Anyway, so the thing that I don't like is that all the screens are facing our way and not the cameras. We actually want to see the colors. And in order to get that done, we only have to change the Z on the instance on points to minus one. And that will basically invert this entire selection. We should probably do minus one on X as well. And now this seems like everything is correct. Very cool. However, there is still a problem. I'm going to set this to this mode so you can actually see what's happening. And all of these are the same color. And what we need to click is pick instance right here in the instance on points. And then you will see that it will take one of the instances from our collection instead of pasting all of them in the same location. What I don't like is that it's showing the screen. I actually want it to show the color. So we have to change some values in this map range. We actually want it to rotate the other way around like this. Let's have a look what it did for us. So now all we need to do is create an animation out of this. So how do we do it? So how can we make sure that we make an animation where each time that this moves upwards, it is following the same type of animation. Uh, we don't want to do this by hand. You don't want to like place a keyframe right over there and go to frame 10 and uh, you know maybe here it's a bit slower. And then on frame 30, is, it should be something like this. And then you would have to do everything by hand and it will just be one big mess. So we're not going to do that. We're actually going to do it in a way smarter fashion. I'm going to take my calculator and right here, a circle is 360 degrees. We all know that, the 360. And there are, as my resample curve says, 11 iPhones. So I'm going to divide this by 11, like this, 32.727272, blah, blah, blah. Basically what we want to do is start with zero or start uh, right over here if you would like something like this. Maybe start over here, whatever you would like. I'm going to start from zero and I'm going to rotate this so it's exactly on the middle itself. 
So I'm simply rotating this entire geometry nodes section. So right now I'm going to take this rotation, press I, then I'm going into the future like let's say 30 frames for now. And I'm going to type here 32.73, press I. And now basically what we've got is one entire animation like this. And this should go on for 11 times. So let's open this up. Go to the graph editor by pressing control tab and open geometry nodes. Go to the Z value because that's the only one we truly need. And what I want to do is make sure that it's going fast in the beginning, then it's slowing down as it's going to the top and then it's going fast uh, to its next position. Uh, so the way to do it is actually quite simple. We're going to take both of these handles right here, scale Y and scale it like this. So now we get a type of S curve and it's going faster over here. Here it is slower and then it's moving fast. So let's see what it looks like. And we made a small mistake. It shouldn't start right over here. So it should actually be starting from somewhere over here. And now it is showing itself and moving out, showing itself and moving out. But we're definitely not going to do this for each and every telephone that we see. We are simply going to modifiers right over here. If you don't see this tab, press N. Go to add modifiers, cycles, and now it will repeat the motion. But this is the same iPhone over and over again. But you can already see that it's looping, so that's good. Uh, however, we want to change some settings right over here. So set repeat motion in the after mode to repeat with offset. And you will immediately see in the curve that things will change. But look at what happens. And we have a looping animation that is going on forever and ever and ever. So now if we want to make adjustments to this animation, let's say we're not happy with how long it is staying in the air right here, then we can also turn this off with this check mark. We can change our original curve right here. So let's go ahead and bring this to the side, maybe something like this, and bring it upwards as well, just a little bit. Now turn back on the cycles modifier. We can take this down maybe just a notch, and perhaps it's a bit too slow. So I can take this entire keyframe, G and X, and bring it over here. And now we basically have a circling animation where each one is getting selected. Now this is very cool, but there's one more thing I want to show you. If you play around with the rotation, you can already get some pretty cool looking results. Now, of course, the geometry proximity might not be the best option to set right over here anymore, but think about how you can use this. You can place, let's say, four spheres, one over here, one over there, one over there, and have them rotate 360 degrees or 180 degrees each time that it's moving over. Or you can make a line instead of a curved circle and have it move to the side. And then each time when it crosses over the UV sphere, it is flipping over. It's flipping over iPhones like that. Think about how you can use this. It's a very, very powerful technique. Now in this tutorial, I'm not going to take your hand all the way until the end. I actually want you to be creative, come up with something for your own. You've now learned the fundamentals of how to use the geometry proximity node and how to create a very cool looking animation doing so. And I want you to play around with it. Think about things. You can add a, uh, let's say a spiral instead of a curve. Uh, for example, you can bring it uh, right in there and let's see what that does. Now, maybe that's not uh, the coolest animation, but right now it looks like this, who knows? I don't know what you are going to do. I don't know what you like to do. But be creative with this and make sure that you get something cool looking that you can be proud of. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please click on like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. I get the money and it's right on cue. Keep the duffel bag up inside my coop. Hold a couple racks, tell them I love you. You want to be a boss, do it like I do. Uh.